Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Hope you're having a great morning so far. We're giving you some nice information, especially when it comes to Calypso. I particularly enjoy that um, that interview just now, uh, Ayinka, because of the information being shared and the possibility of continuing sharing that information because I do believe that mentorship is one of the ways that we pass information on from generation to generation, but also just mere conversation can do the same thing. So I, I really am happy that Nardis has taken this initiative while people are still, while the walk-in libraries are still uh, with us. Well, that is the part for me. Mm -hmm. And I love that they refer to them as living encyclopedias because that's exactly what they are. Mm -hmm. And it, as much as you referenced uh, other cultures that were spearheading those sorts of projects, I feel it was so innate to us. We, we, that's what we do. The older heads tell the younger persons about what has happened. That's how, how it's supposed to how, be. How, at least, yes. How our generation would have enjoyed it. However, versus the new generation is interesting. And so also commendable is the attempt to infuse the virtual world. As much as they talked about how AI is taking over, they're using it in a good way. So the digitization or the digital access that you're gaining mm -hmm. will make for a very dynamic experience. I hope that they take uh, the opportunity to make it dynamic as well, not just have persons standing there speaking to them, but talk to people in a different way. And hopefully they're able to engage the online audience in the same manner that they're able to engage the in-person audience as well and continue to share that information. But speaking of sharing information, actually there's another historian who's launching a book that I'm very, very interested in getting because it's about Calypso Fiesta, which is a gateway to Calypso Monarch. So basically he's chronicling the, well, let me find out exactly what, it is do, what he's doing. Historian and author Dr. Rudolf Otley joins us via Zoom. Good morning, Dr. Otley. Hi, good morning, Rockers, and to your team. I hope you all are doing fine down there. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that uh, things are about to get a bit hectic for you this weekend. I know you have your book launch happening, but I, want to, I wanted to get a little bit into the inspiration for, for documenting this aspect of our history. Well, it, it's, it stemmed from my entire interest in the understanding and finding out more of the Eclipse art form. And therefore, this is another one of those major events that has contributed to my being involved in research and also to ensure that the, the, the major components of Calypso are recorded for children and grandchildren. Yeah. Now, I, I personally have a, a thing against competitions, right? But I do understand the importance or, or, or the, the role that this competition in particular has played in our culture over the years. Um, in, this, in, this, in this book, is there going to be like the documentation of when it began to what it became and what it is now? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, basically, it's, it's, it, it, it puts light onto that basic um, um, qu uh, question you have about competitions and, and the discussion around it. And if we understand the, the history of Calypso and the history of culture in the post-colonial world, we will understand especially the role of the Chantres and the Calypsonians, how important competition was to them. And we have to contextualize that in the sense that understanding what it was meant to be a Calypsonian in the early 1900s and what it meant to be a, 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 an, of African descent in, in that period, whereby you were limited in what you were able to pursue in terms of whether it's culture or art or academics. And therefore, the competitions were really designed to provide some means of sustainability for the practitioner, practitioners of our culture during that period. And therefore, it continues even today. We are by, uh, for some of the young artists, that's, that seems to be a way out for them by winning one of the competitions. So it's very important that we understand the, the whole concept of competition and the, and the role it has played in enhancing the lives of the, the practicing Calypsonians. How long have you been working on this book, Dr. Otley? Um, I, 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 I can't give a specific time because what I, how I work is I, I may go to the archives and, or to deal with one topic and then as I go through different material, I encounter things that I'm interested in. So sometimes I work simultaneously on three or four projects. So I will say maybe over the last five years. Okay. And in terms of, like you mentioned, getting the archives and all that stuff, people always complain that it seems to be difficult for them to access certain aspects of our, our cultural history. Did you encounter those blockages when you were doing your research? Not really, you know, except in one segment of the book where I, I had to um, rely on um, some people's information regarding um, participants in the di different stages of the Calypso Fiesta, different years, whereby we, there was little no documentation as to who performed in Fiesta, let's say 1959 or 1960 and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, though, once you spend time in the archives, um, in, the, in the newspapers of the day, 
um, you know, going back to the August and the uh, the um, tra early trained at Guardian, they, they, like, they, there's sufficient information there that you can, you know, document a topic that you are interested in. Yeah. I wanted to ask as well this morning, we, we spoke a little bit about that, and I was wondering if you uh, can let me know, maybe I, I'm not as informed as I ought to be, but you can tell me, are we still documenting in such a variety our culture now as the, as the documents that you were able to find then? I think we're doing a, a better job now, yes. Because you remember, again, the society's perception of culture has changed a bit. We, for example, you know, our 1962 Independence Calypso competition, there's little um, newspaper coverage of it. Um, but today, most of the competitions have been covered by our media, and therefore, their legacy will live on for those who are coming up and who are interested in that kind of research. Because, again, we have to contextualize it. In yeah. Calypso, in in pre-independence, the newspaper people, um, the journalists weren't really interested in documenting it because Calypso was still seen as an art form for the outcasts of the society. And the Calypso music was still perceived as jungle music. So mm -hmm. why would you want to document that? But now I think we, we have our perspective of Calypso has changed a bit. And therefore, um, there's more interest in documenting. You know, and the, the, the journalists and the newspaper people are really much um, making some notes of it. So that I think... In years to come, we will have a lot of information there. I agree. Tell me about, about the book launch. When, uh, when are we getting the Trinidad version of the book launch? Because I know you're launching this well, evening yeah. in Toronto. Well, we had, a, we had a version of the book launch in 2020, 2022 in, in, in San Fernando. Okay. And this is where I would like to thank um, the former mayor of San Fernando, Junior Regrello, for being very instrumental in ensuring that this work was done. And we did it at the San Fernando City Hall in 2022. Uh, um, we're doing this one in Toronto today, and hopefully on my return to Trinidad, we'll do one at, in the north, north of Trinidad um, sometime very soon. Well, I look forward to that. But if people want, wanted to get access to the book, how can they do so? Well, through, um, through the, uh, my uh, paper base, the, my, my sole um, distributors in Trinidad, uh, or directly from me, um, so that those are the two ways I, I'm, I'm utilizing at the moment. All right, fantastic. Dr. Otley, congratulations on, uh, on this achievement because I think that it's very, very important for us to continue to document our history so that the future generations have an idea as to what came before them and what it actually meant. Okay, thank you very much and all the best. See you all, guys. Soon. All right, no problem. Enjoy the rest of your day and all the best this evening at your book launch. Thank you very much. All right, take care. As Dr. Rudolf Otley, historian and author, joining us this morning to tell us about his brand new book, Calypso Fiesta at Skinner Park, the gateway to Trinidad and Tobago, Calypso Monarch. And of course, he's launching it tonight in Toronto. So if you're out there in Canada, you can go check it out at the Consulate General of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, starts at 6 p.m. Yeah.